subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi! Welcome to Test Prep Training. Today we will discuss about, Salesforce Field Service Lightning Consultant. This program validates the expertise of qualified implementation consultants, partners, and administrators on their ability to deploy, field service lightning to an organization. Eligibility. You will be eligible for this program, if you possess the following eligibility requirements, first, 1 to 2 years as a business analyst. Second, 1 plus years in the field services industry. Third, 2 plus years of services, and support experience. Intended job roles. 1. Consultant. 2. Mobile solution designer. 3. System analyst. 4. Technical architect. 5. Service cloud administrator. 6. Field service operations manager. 7. Service desk manager. Now we will discuss about exam details. 1. Exam name is Salesforce Field Service Lightning Consultant. 2. Number and type of questions are 60 multiple choice or multiple select questions and 5 unscored questions. 3. Time allotted to complete the exam is 105 minutes, time allows for unscored questions. 4. Passing score is 63%. 5. Registration fee is USD 200, plus applicable taxes as required per local law. 6. Retake fee is USD 100, plus applicable taxes as required per local law. Scheduling the exam. The Salesforce Field Service Lightning Consultant exam, can be scheduled either at an on-site proctored center, or online with a virtual proctor through the Salesforce testing partner, Criterion Global Testing Solutions. Let's discuss about exam outline. We have 8 domains in total. First, Managing Resources, which comprises of 16% weightage in exam. Second, Managing Work Orders, which comprises of 23% weightage in exam. Third, Managing Scheduling, and Optimization, which comprises of 28% weightage in exam. Fourth, Configuring Mobility, which comprises of 10% weightage in exam. Fifth, Managing Inventory, which comprises of 8% weightage in exam. Sixth, Managing Assets, which comprises of 5% weightage in exam. Seventh, Configuring Maintenance Plans, which comprises of 5% weightage in exam. Eighth, Permissions, and Sharing, which comprises of 5% weightage in exam. Now, we'll discuss about each domain in detail. Domain 1, Managing Resources, which comprises of 16% weightage in exam. This can be explained in 7 parts. 1. Compare dynamic versus static crews. 2. Determine how, and when to set up different resource types. 3. Given a scenario, recommend the appropriate service territories, and their members. 4. Explain the relationships between timesheets, timesheet entries, service resources, and work orders. 5. Demonstrate how to use skills, skill levels, and time-based skills. 6. Show how to use operating hours for service resources, accounts, work orders, and booking appointments. 7. Distinguish between FSL license types, and when to deploy them. Domain 2, Managing Work Orders, which comprises of 23% weightage in exam. This can be explained in 6 parts. 1. Configure work order processes, parameters, and work types. 2. Given a scenario, choose the appropriate resource preferences. 3. Apply products required to a work order. 4. Analyze how and when to use work order line items. 5. Illustrate how to configure work order milestones. 6. Given a scenario, recommend the appropriate relationship between service appointments, work orders, and work order line items. Now, Domain 3, Managing Scheduling and Optimization, which comprises of 28% weightage in exam. This can be explained in 13 parts. 1. Understand different field service settings for FSL administrator. 2. Given a scenario, choose the appropriate action to manage a service appointment. 3. Given a scenario, apply the appropriate life cycle of a service appointment required to execute a work order. 4. Decide on the appropriate schedule policy to achieve the business requirements. 5. Given a scenario, determine the appropriate option to execute complex work in FSL. 6. Explain the difference between a multi-day service appointment and a standard service appointment. 7. Outline the differences between aerial versus street level routing. 8. Given a scenario, determine the appropriate dispatch strategy for an organization. 
9. Compare different filtering options for the dispatcher console. 10. Explain how to set up optimization. 11. Given a scenario, decide the appropriate type of scheduling service to use. 12. Given a scenario, decide the appropriate type of optimization service to use. 13. Understand the usage of field service lightning for daytime tracking fields. Now, domain 4, configuring mobility, which comprises of 10% weightage in exam. This can be explained in four parts. 1. Assess the requirements and tools needed to execute a customer sign-off process. 2. Given a scenario, configure the field service app to support key business processes. 3. Distinguish between field service mobile and Salesforce mobile app capabilities. 4. Understand the available FSL mobile settings. Domain 5, Managing Inventory, which comprises of 8% weightage in exam. This can be explained in three parts. 1. Given business requirements, distinguish the appropriate price book model for products consumed. 2. Given business requirements, justify which defines the applicable inventory model. 3. Explain the return order object model and process. Domain 6. Managing assets, which comprises of 5% weightage in exam, and this can be explained as, apply procedural concepts to maintain, and update assets, and asset relationships. Domain 7, configuring maintenance plans, which comprises of 5% weightage in exam. Given a scenario, recommend the appropriate maintenance plan. Domain 8, permissions, and sharing, which comprises of 5% weightage in exam. This can be explained in three parts. 1. Understand the use of cases for different types of FSL permission sets. 2. Explain how scheduled service appointments are shared with service resources. 3. Understand the differences between user territories and service territories. Preparation Guide First, Salesforce Training. Salesforce provides candidates with training that helps them to build competence, confidence, and credibility. In this, Candidates can choose to learn online at their own pace, or they can learn from an accredited instructor built by experts at Salesforce. This will prove to be beneficial for both beginners, who are working on existing skills, or who are experienced professionals required knowledge. Second, join community. You can join the Trailblazer community to collaborate and study with fellow Trailblazers. The members of this community are both skilled and experienced developers as well as inexperienced learners. So, Joining such a community will resolve almost all your exam-related problems. These communities are very interactive, and updated with new ideas, and new development in the market. Therefore, to stay updated, and get your queries resolved from experiences members make sure to join this community. Third, Books. Books are the most trusted, and reliable source of information. Books can provide an advantage to learn, and understand things more accurately. For the Salesforce Field Service Lightning Consultant exam, there are various books available which you can find online, or in libraries. Fourth, Exam Practice Tests. Practice tests have always been the most reliable source for assessing the level of preparation. By practicing, you will be able to improve your answering skills in a specified time frame, that will result in saving a lot of time in the actual exam. So, make sure to find the best practice test which will suit your requirement, and start practicing at the earliest. You can also refer to test prep training practice tests, which are based on the actual exam pattern. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.